All right, guys, good morning and welcome to October. Happy October 1st. If you guys are just tuning into this channel for the first time, my name is Casey Willax and I am the most sore I've ever been. At least it feels like I've ever been. And I promised you last week that I was going to start doing a tutorial once a week and it's been a week and I'm gonna consider this an off day. I'm just gonna help you guys out and give you some tricks and some tips to help improve your backside 360s. Hopefully get them by the end of your next session. If you watch this video and apply them. But uh, yeah, we got Niso down on the jump right now. I'm gonna take you through a couple POVs of the back three and then a couple nice lined up shots and overlay some audio and explain to you guys just how easy a backside 360 is. So let's get into this so I can get home. <laughs> home being the van. turn, float, and ride away clean. And that's it, guys. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. All right, here we really go. The most crucial step before you even jump into doing any trick is you wanna be able to envision it perfectly in your head. Just like with anything in the world, you wanna picture yourself being able to approach it, pop off the kicker, spin, grab, whatever you're gonna do in the air, land it clean, feel the feelings of actually riding away, being stoked that you finally landed your first 360, open your eyes up, and then now you're doing it for the second time. So, the approach. When you're coming in, you always wanna have full confidence with any trick you're doing. You've already pictured yourself landing it, so you know that it's possible. Extra speed is better because if you scrub and you take off some of your speed, you'll still be able to clear it, and you can always absorb the kicker and not pop. So, when you're coming into the jump, very important to Make sure that when you take off the last little bit of your takeoff, your board, the nose of your board is pointed completely straight. If your board is pointing to the left or your board is pointing to the right, then you're gonna go that way. We wanna have a straight trajectory all the way to the landing and that happens by staying on your heel edge as long as you can. And if you're having issues when you traverse onto your toe edge and you're sending it off to the right because the nose of your board is pointing to the right, then you can easily fix that by just holding your heel edge a little bit longer. So as you're approaching, you have all the speed, you're on your heel edge, you're on your heel edge, you start going, you're about halfway up the kicker is when I traverse to my toe edge. And I try to just have the tiniest bit of angle to lock my toe edge in, not enough so that your toes or your edge sinks in at all, especially on slushy days, just enough so that you can lock your edge in. When I'm on my heel edge, when I switch it to my toe edge, my board is still pointing a little bit to the left and as I'm going right to the top of the kicker is when the nose of my board finally reaches true straight. And at that point you want your knees to be a little bit bent and before you're even off the kicker, this is where all the commitment comes in. You wanna have your head and your shoulders, both of your arms initiating way in front of your lower body. This is where stretching comes really into play because you have to be able to almost dislocate your lower from your upper body. So as you're coming off the top, you wanna to pop a little bit from your knees. You wanna have your head, your eyes, and your arms and your shoulders completely committed to the 360. As you come off the takeoff, there will only be a small second where you'll be blind. And as soon as you pass that blind spot, you're gonna spot your landing. Your legs are gonna be way behind you. At this point, this is why it's a huge, huge tip to leave your lower body behind your upper body because if you overshoot the jump, you can open up your arms a little bit where it slows yourself down, it slows the rotation down, and then you can just bring your legs around slowly to land. And also, if you pop and you realize that you're not gonna make it, if your head's around and you can spot your landing, you can pull your legs around real quick and you can get the 360 around so that you land flat and right away, even if you didn't make it all the way down. It's obviously better to start this on a smaller jump and work your way up. I'm doing this on a big jump because it's a lot easier to break down, it's funner, it's the floating of it, it makes it a lot easier. Everything about going bigger makes it easier. It's definitely scarier, but it's not harder. So, now that we have the approach, you guys know, heel edge, last second, traverse to your toe edge, knees are bent, you pop, you turn your head and your arms to spot your landing, you're in the air. You don't literally have to do anything except keep your arms by your side just to keep it looking fresh. If you flail your arms, it's gonna throw you off balance, you're gonna get some weird 
trajectory. You're gonna get some weird axis that starts to twist you towards a way that you don't wanna go. So when you take off as well, if you are bent over your board leaning, that's terrible. You wanna, if you're gonna bend down, you have to bend at the knees and keep your body upright or else you're gonna go cork. If you wanna cork it, obviously drop your head down to the side a little bit and you're gonna go corked. But if you're doing your first 360s, you don't wanna go cork. You wanna do a flat spin and the way that you do that is all in the dip of the head and the shoulders. So instead of dipping at all, you just wanna make sure that you're turning with your upper body and you're turning your head while you're standing completely upright, athletic stance. You're in the air, you're floating, you don't need to grab, you can have your arms by your sides, just keeping it looking cool. You have your landing spotted because your legs are way behind you and you have all that extra time and all that freedom to twist your lower body using your core. So as you spot your landing and you realize, okay, I either have 20 feet or eight meters to fall, then that's when you realize, okay, I can hold my legs where I want to because they're way behind me and I have all this extra room for freedom and play or the landing's coming up soon and I only have maybe a couple feet or a meter until I hit the ground and that's when you pull your core around and you bring your legs to that 360. Pretty much as simple as I can break it down while you're in the air your head already spotted the landing, your eyes and everything, your upper body is already done with the trick and your lower body is just waiting for the call from your brain asking it, how much more time do we have until we need to land this thing? So when you're coming around to land it, I try to land the littlest bit on a toe edge. I always try to land on my toe edge, but it almost seems like flat base. It's just enough edge to lock yourself in so that you're pointing in a straight line and you're riding away without scrubbing. So. That's it, you're riding away from your 360 right there. A couple notes to just run through this one more time. Always have extra speed. It's so much better to take off with speed. Make sure that the nose of your board is pointing straight when you go off. That you do that by holding your heel edge as long as you can until you're halfway up the kicker. Switch to your toe edge, pop because you've bent down. So you pop a little bit, you're standing upright, your body's not dipped over. Your head and your arms and your upper body are in front of your lower body. Your lower body stays where it was when you take off and that's how you spot your landing. The whole time in the air, your head and your eyes and your shoulders are already ready to land. You're spotting your landing, you're just floating, enjoying your time. That's when if you progress, you can pull your legs up, you can grab mute, you can grab Indy, you can grab melon. The melon will actually pull it around in front so you won't have as much time to leave your legs behind as anything else. If you wanna grab stale fish, that'll leave you with some extra time and your legs will be behind you. But you're coming around for the landing, prepare yourself, knees a little bit straight so that when you land, you can actually bend, absorb the landing, have a little bit of a toe edge when you lock in just like any other trick that you're gonna land and it's as simple as that. It's a backside 360. You can throw any variation you want. You could pop off your heels. You can do it off a side hit. You can push it to 540. You can switch your grab up, truck driver, nose grab, tail grab, whatever. Have as much fun with it as you want. Play around with the trick. And uh, just like anything else, like I always say, you gotta just get out there. You gotta put the time in, put the time in. Watch a tutorial, figure out what you're doing wrong. Get back out there. Push it, push it, push it until you get it. Get broken off a couple times. Maybe land it your first try, but just stay stoked, stay motivated and that's it, that's one of my first trick tutorials I've ever done. If you guys don't know, I do a daily vlog. Today was pretty much considered a day off, a rest day for me. I told you guys I would do a tutorial every week, so leave some comments, let me know how this one went, let me know what I could have done better, or leave some tips of anything else you can think of to help the Backside 360. We'll be doing another tutorial next week, so let me know any other ones you guys maybe want me to do probably front side 360 or something, trying to work our way up in the progression. And yeah, we'll see you guys tomorrow. I do a daily vlog, so we will see you back on hill. Hopefully feeling a lot better than we were today because we were so sore. I'm gonna go lay down now. <sighs> Peace out, guys. Yeah, you wanna say something to the vlog? We got Paul here, fan of the vlog. What's going on, dude? Hey, man, just met KC. Loving Perisher, beautiful day, end of the season. Yeah, it's looking good. Here. Well, nice to meet you, Paul. Thanks, you up anymore or what? Is your last day? Oh, yeah, last day we're going. Next weekend? No, we're done. You're all done. No. Sickest last Don't day ever, you. bro. Guns out, guns out. Yeah. Take care, man. Yeah, nice to meet you, brother. Woo!